Those people that complain about carrying a 16 inch MacBook Pro around, check this out. This was my first laptop ever. It's heavy. And I carried this on many trips with me in a backpack. This thing was quite the beast from time. It's the Lenovo ThinkPad W510. This is from 2010. That's when I bought my first laptop. It has 16 gigs of RAM on board and a Core i7. And my favorite Windows, Windows 7. I ran SharePoint virtual machines on this thing and it worked pretty well. Now I knew this thing was in my closet, but I really am curious to see how it stacks up today. But the first thing I gotta do is get it in working order. By the way, if you think that uh, MacBook Pros are expensive, this thing costs over $3,000 brand new. It's designed not to be opened with one hand because it has a little lock right here. I'm gonna open it with one hand anyway. It's got a webcam, it's got a fingerprint reader, it's got the Think Vantage button, which I've never pressed in my life and I don't know what it does. The touchpad was actually pretty good from what I remember before I tried the Mac ones. And it's got the famous red nipple that ThinkPads often have, which are, <laughs> I don't know who uses that. It's like a fidget toy in the middle of your laptop. On this side, full ethernet, headphone jack, some card here, another card here, never use those. There was a CD drive in here, but I swapped it out for an extra hard drive. On the back we have, a telephone line connection. <laughs> oh my gosh. USB. This is actually the battery. We got some vents. We got a display port, which I never used at that time because I never realized what I was missing. Display port is actually really nice. But when I did need to share my screen, I used this. A VGA port. E-SATA connection. Nice. And this is a 1394 port. I I think that's Thunderbolt, I guess. You can turn Wi-Fi on and off with just the hardware switch right here. USB, super USB. This is uh, when they first came out with those really fast USB 3 speeds. Yeah. Let's see what you got. Ooh, hey, it's actually working. Nothing's on the screen though. Also, if you think Apple charges too much for their accessories and upgrades, check this out. I got the ThinkPad Serial AT hard drive bay adapter, which was $60. So I can put a hard drive in, which was 160 gigabytes, and it cost me 450 bucks. Then I also wanted to upgrade the battery. So it's a little bit of a bigger lithium ion battery. That cost me 180 bucks. According to Lenovo support site, I'm unable to get Windows 11 on this machine. It goes up to Windows 10. I'm gonna try Windows 11 anyway, um, just to see if I can. When you go to download Windows 11, you need the installation media, the ISO, but when you download the installation media, it's an executable, so <laughs> I'm gonna need a Windows machine in order to even run this. First thing I'm gonna do is try Parallels to see if that'll help me out. Automatically starts Parallels. Pops me into Windows 11 and let's run it. Just when you think you have enough tech in here to pretty much do any kind of job, you always run into surprises. For example, I need a thumb drive or a CD burner to get the Windows installation media set up. I don't want to use the CD burner because then I'd have to pop that hard drive and pop in the CD drive. So I'd rather use a thumb drive. It turns out that I'm in a severe deficit of thumb drives. I have this eight gigabyte one, which has Ubuntu on it. I want to keep it that way. I have this one, it's a 32 gigabyte one that no longer even responds. And I have a bunch of two gigabyte ones which are not enough. So then I tried this crucial one, which has been nothing but trouble since I bought it. And of course it doesn't work for this one for some reason or another, my Mac recognizes it, but Windows does not. And to be fair, it does say we can't find a USB flash drive. So maybe it needs a flash drive. <sighs> anyway. This could be one of two things, either it needs a flash drive or this simply doesn't work because it could be an ARM version of Windows that's trying to run this and it needs an x64 version of Windows. So instead of going out and getting another USB drive or overriding that Ubuntu one, I'm gonna keep digging myself down this hole. I'm gonna use this little mini PC and try to use the Windows creation utility on this with the Crucial. I'm gonna remote desktop into it so I can use that machine completely headless. And there we go. 
All right, the funny thing is this USB stick that wasn't working at all now is getting recognized by the Windows machine. All right, it's done. This PC can't run Windows 11. It doesn't meet the system requirements to install this version of Windows. All right, Windows 10 it is. And we're on the desktop. This is exciting. It's even more exciting when you had to wait for half an hour. Um, I don't know, that's just how nature works, I guess. The resolution is all messed up. I don't know if this is the way I used to work or what. Windows 10 running on this machine that I bought 14 years ago. Seems to be working. It's not super quiet. Let's get VS Code installed on this thing. One thing I'm really annoyed by after using the single trackpad from the MacBook is having to scroll with this, but click with these or these. What does that middle button do? I've never used that. Oh, what? Look at that. It allows me to just scroll without having to hold this down. I didn't know about that. That's really cool. <laughs> Technology from the past. Wait a minute. I have an NVIDIA card on this? I didn't even know that. The NVIDIA Quadro FX880M, whatever that is. <laughs> had no idea. But before I restart to install those NVIDIA drivers, I wanna see how long VS Code takes to start up on first launch. Here we go. Go. Not bad. Oh, there it goes. Okay, that wasn't too bad. While it's installing, let's just quickly test out the audio. Okay, let's, uh, let's try this on the MacBook Pro. Well, I didn't really use it for sound. Restarting. You know, it's not bad actually. <laughs> it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. It's working. It's working quite nicely actually. Open up Edge, there it is. It's acceptable. Wait, what was that flickering? I don't know. VS Code? What, what the hell? Oh, the NVIDIA drivers kicked in. Oh, that looks so much better. I was wondering what the heck was going on with the display. It was all pixelated and now it looks way better. Oh my gosh. Now this is what I remember. VS Code, nice. Why is this machine so good after 14 years and running a new operating system that it's never seen before? Okay, the screen. On the MacBook, the screen is more reflective. But this is okay because you got that sharp light that I have up here in my office. And that's reflecting, but it's tolerable because I can localize it in one spot and still see all my code. Here, I've got this like this haze and it's just spreading the light out across the monitor, which is a lot less tolerable. I don't even know why I'm comparing these two, but <laughs> I guess that's what, that's what I'm gonna do anyway. Let's try some code navigation. File to file. Opening up new folders, jumping around. Okay, how about here? Oh yeah, there's a big difference in how quickly files open. But so far, I'm actually pretty impressed with how this machine is doing. Now this was a $3,000 machine, but I've scoured eBay. You can get this from anywhere from 160 bucks to 300 something dollars. Don't know what condition it'll be in, but uh, it's it's a usable machine. So this, this Geekom little mini PC is, uh, I don't know, probably a year old. And here's what we got. The speed, 1.4 gigahertz. This is a Core i5, by the way, at 2.3. This one is a Core i7 at 1.6. And we're getting to 1.2 gigahertz, so not as fast. They're both four core processors with eight logical processors. So each real processor, they have the same exact L1 cache, L2 cache, and L3 cache specs, and they both have 16 gigs of RAM. 
It's kind of funny. <laughs> Even the hard disk. Look at that. The capacity is 477 gigs. And here, 466 gigs. I had to point this thing away from my MacBook because the exhaust fan is doing a really good job here of extracting heat. <laughs> Even though this body right here where the CPU is, is actually staying cool, which means the fan is doing a good job. But right here, it's so hot. On this side, it's 52 degrees. And at the back, there's another fan blowing out. And over here, we're getting up to, let's see, 53, I saw, 55. So yeah, these little areas right here, really hot. All right, Visual Studio's up and running. Let's kick it off and see what happens. It's not spiffy. It's not exactly a sprinting bunny. Sprinting bunny? What I was saying is uh, some technologies are going to be a pain to work with. Like, for example, probably Blazor, because you need to rebuild every time you make a change. Whereas other technologies where you have hot reload, those might be a little bit easier to work with this machine on. There is my Blazor app. Modern web development with .NET. Now, of course, I don't know if you can hear that, but that's a very constant noise. It's not super loud, but it is there and it's constant and it could get annoying. All right, it's time for a battery test. Is this battery actually charging? It's been plugged in overnight, so let's see. I'm gonna unplug it. Hey, that battery is actually alive. 100% remaining. Wow, it's not even set to best performance. You can tweak the performance right here. So I'm gonna set it to best performance. I mean, I want this thing to be fast, right? 99, 49 minutes remaining. That's the calculation here. And I'm not even doing anything. There's 98, oh boy. This is a race against time. So when you whip this thing out on an airplane, you better be sure you know what you're doing. So you can get right into your code and do an emergency 97% <laughs> emergency patch or something or an emergency deployment. You better be quick about it because this thing will be a ticking time bomb. I don't think this video would be complete if we didn't do some kind of performance tests. So I've got a couple set up here and just for fun, I'm gonna run this also on a virtual machine here on my Mac. This is a Windows 11 running as a virtual machine and it only has four processors instead of eight like that one. It also has eight gigs of RAM instead of 16 like that one. So the clock speed is really gonna be the only thing that saves us here. I have a single core test and I have a multi-core test and the multi-core test is gonna be interesting because well, this one has more cores but these cores are way faster so i don't know who's gonna win i have this repo on my github if you want to check it out but basically this is a c plus plus sorting algo i have a single core and a multi-core one here and this is going to sort 10 billion with a b integers let's set that up over here too because this is going to be a race now it's been a little while but we've got the schwarzenegger joining us today when i push this button we've got fingers and I'm gonna align those with the enter keys, of course, so we can run these at the same time. Now I realize there's only two machines and I have two hands, but I kind of miss the Schwarzenegger. So I'm gonna do it anyway. Ready to go, let's do this. I think you probably expected this because this is a single core operation. But what I didn't expect was that this wasn't gonna be a huge difference. A difference of 12 years of improvements. 36.4 seconds here on the Mac, virtual windows, and 52 seconds on this old workstation beast. Not too bad for an old geezer. All right, next is a multi-core test. And I had to change this number to 100 million because uh, I got errors when trying to compile it with a higher number, with a 10 billion value. Anyway, 100 million should be good enough to get a relative result between these two machines. Gonna have to set it up again. Don't watch this part, okay? This is the less glamorous part of making these videos. Okay, ready to go. Boom. Come on, who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Hello, oh, we got four new cores versus eight old cores and four cores wins. 28 seconds over here for the sort. That one is 52 seconds on this one. Pretty weird coincidence that it took the same amount of time. I compiled the right program. It's a different algorithm though, so it's understandable. You can check the code, I'll link to it down below. I decided to run a simple benchmark. This is Geekbench 6 running on these machines. Now on my Mac, it's running on a virtual machine in Windows. So I also decided to run it on the little mini PC as well, just to see what we get there. Well, these two are done. This is the mini PC, pretty terrible scores. There's the result URL, if you want to check it out. Here's the virtual machine, which did much, much better. And still waiting for this one. But here are the Lenovo scores. 
Now this is a virtual machine of course and if I wanted to I could increase my core count here to 8 or 16 and that'll smoke this test. If you want to see more about how I set up the virtual machines I'll link to that video down below. Before I switched to Max using virtual machines I was using this and now I'm virtualizing everything and things are actually pretty good. <laughs> Can't complain. Just ran CPU Z, and this is my mini PC. There's the Intel Core i5. The results are, well, not that great. And here's the virtual machine results, much better. This is the ARM version of CPU Z, by the way. And finally, here are the results for the Lenovo machine Core i7. It's an oldie, so don't expect too much here. Do you have an old machine you're keeping around? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to find out more about virtualization and how I've been using it, check out this video over here. Thanks for watching this one, folks. I'll see you in the next one.